Monday, July the 4th, a day that, that so many across the country, including Oklahomans, really get up and celebrate and have a great time with family and friends on the 4th of July. However, for Oklahomans, at least for those Oklahoma City Thunder fans out there, today will be a day they'll never forget, and it's not for the right reasons, okay? Kevin Durant, the face of the franchise, decided as Lou Brown from the movie Major League might say, throw him a big shit burger. <laughs> During the 10 o'clock a.m. hour, Central Standard Time in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City area especially, if you fell out of your couch, out of your chair, out of the shower and slipped, or if you're driving and <laughs> went off the side of the road, first of all, I hope you're okay. I hope you're fine. But secondly, I think I know why that happened. It came from Bricktown, this huge noise in the form of the longest and largest row of dominoes all falling. Otherwise, as a result, not of an earthquake, but of a Durant quake. That's right, the news that he said, I'm leaving OKC for good, and I'm going to go win championships in Golden State for the Warriors. At least that's his mindset. At least that's the news from ESPN and from Yahoo. Kevin Durant, the one of the biggest free agent commodities in recent years for the Thunder, for the NBA, and in sports in general, decides, bye, 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 I'm heading to the West Coast to play for Golden State, for Steve Kerr, for Steph Curry, for Clay Thompson, for Draymond Green, and as they were saying, Gilligan's Island, and the rest. It's the ones who come back and did get traded for Golden State. One year, he'll be there for sure. The second year is an option, but obviously, if you know anything about the recent salary cap for the NBA, it went up big time this year because of the TV contracts. So you know that Durant's going to get the max deal. He was going to get the max deal with Oklahoma City if he had decided to come back. This wasn't about money. But it's a two-year contract, essentially, the second year being an option. And that second year, the TV contracts after 2017 will go up even higher for that salary cap. And you're talking about even more to change. But again, this wasn't about money because whatever Golden State's paying the rent, Oklahoma City would have been able to pay him anyway. It wasn't about the almighty dollar. So what was this about, okay? Uh, first of all, before I go any further, let me preface this by saying that I am not a diehard fan of the Oklahoma City Thunder. I live in Oklahoma, and I like the Thunder a lot because it's, it's the local team, but my allegiance stays true to my Los Angeles Lakers, who I've been a fan of since the early 80s, since I, was, since I was 11 years old. That's 35 years talking. I'll be 46 next month. You might be saying, well, you have a lot of room to talk because your Lakers suck. <laughs> I was like, yeah, well, first of all, I know they suck. I know they're bad. I know that they've made horrible decisions. I know that the Lakers need help. Okay. Hopefully, I'll still be alive when the Lakers can get back to the playoffs. So, so I recognize that my Lakers have flaws that are that are too many and too lengthy for me to describe on one block. I don't have that much time. But you have time to talk about Kevin Durant, number one, reason why he left. Obviously, he told the Thunder, you've been a great franchise to me. I've been great for you. We were winning organization. Having said that, I was never going to win championships here. I was never going to be able to win championships here with what this franchise has. Even with the Ibaka trade that sent Victor Oladipo, the terrific young talent from Magic, to the Thunder, along with some other players, too, as a result of that trade, Durant basically told Sam Presti, the general manager, the owner, Clay Bennett, and Billy Donovan, and all of us, I can never win a championship in Oklahoma City. That's what that tells me. It's not about money, which it's not. It's about championships. And obviously, the, the Warriors are proven in that area with their current talent, and, of course, their head coach, Steve Kerr, because they won the whole thing in 2015 and, you know, could have and some people thought should have won the whole thing just recently. But, of course, Cleveland, give them credit for coming back 3-1. to one. Number two, you wonder how much the heartbreak of Game 6 of the Western Conference Finals creeped into this decision. And I say this, you might be saying, well, what does one game have to do with it? In my opinion, more than you might think. Remember, Game 6... Thunder up three games to two, up by seven or eight points in the final eight minutes at home, and you got Golden State dang near on the canvas. About ready to beat them. 
the defending world champions, the greatest team for one season ever, 73 win regular season Golden State team. They're just about done. Stick a fork in them, they're finished. And then what happens? Well, little thing called Clay Thompson, little thing called Steph Curry. You know, they get hot, and the Thunder offensively, if they could have just played decent, they're going to the finals. But instead, they go into a shell, they turn the ball over, can't get anything, and they blow the eight point lead, lose game six. And the inevitable happens. They lose Game 7 at Golden State. Warriors get to the finals. The Thunder falls short in the Western Conference Finals. You wonder how much that's done. Because nobody's going to be able to convince me that Kevin Durant is going to be a member of the Golden State Warriors if the Thunder win that series. Maybe they beat Cleveland in the finals. Maybe they don't. We'll never know. But I think that weighed in heavily. Number three, I think Durant knows something about the Thunder's future in terms of its personnel. And you might be thinking, what does that mean? Okay, I'll make it short for you. Two words, Russell Westbrook. This tells me that Westbrook after next year will not be a member of the Thunder. And don't think that Durant and Westbrook don't talk about things like this, okay? There's so much that happens that goes behind closed doors when it comes to sports, okay? Especially professional sports. And I think Durant knows something. I think he knows that Westbrook, he's got one more year to go in his contract. And then he can go anywhere he wants, just like Durant did this year. I think he knows that Westbrook's going to go somewhere. And it could be on the West Coast, could be with New York, could be uh, with uh, you know one of the Los Angeles teams. I think it'd be the latter because you know, Westbrook's from um, the California area. Of course, plays college ball at UCLA. So that would only make sense from at least a geographical perspective. So what have we learned from all this? Okay, number one. Don't believe everything you hear, people, from local and national media. It drives me crazy. You know, what, you know, this past weekend when, you know, NBA free agents could basically negotiate, talk about their future, stay with their current team or go somewhere else. And Durant met with at least half a dozen teams, the Clippers. All I hear on TV and here on the radio, well, Durant had a very impressive meeting with the Clippers. And the bottom line was the Clippers were out there running pretty quick, all right? I mean, they re-signed Austin Rivers, and Chris Paul wasn't even there at the negotiation, okay? I mean, one of the faces of your franchise, maybe the face, Chris Paul, and he's not there. Send the video message, not the same thing. So I think the Clippers entertained talk and really wanted to rant, but I'm not sure if they made an all-out presentation to try to get it. The Boston Celtics over the weekend. Tom Brady was at the meeting. Yeah, I know Durant's a big Brady fan, but... You're telling me that that would have been the tipping point to Durant going to Boston is because it's in the same geographical vicinity as one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game? He would have gone to Boston because he felt that they would have a great shot at getting to the finals. And signing out Horford to me doesn't do it. All right, Horford's an all-star, but he's been a, a player with recent injuries, and Boston still... Defensively, I'm not sure how much I trust him. All right, I, I'm, I'm not sure how much I trust the Celtics. I, I think for Durant, he wanted to go to a team where he's still an integral part of it, where he could still, I'm not saying be the face of the franchise necessarily, but still become a major contributor for it, and at the same time, maybe lessen the workload for him. Okay? And I might, you might be saying, well, with Oklahoma City, you know, he has West, Russell Westbrook to carry a lot of that load. That's true, but outside of Westbrook, who really carried that load besides Westbrook and Durant? Exactly. With Golden State, it's more about a team that has so many integral parts to it. And I think another thing that is not going to be talked about a lot, you better consider this. The amount of minutes Durant was amassing while with Oklahoma City. A ton of minutes, especially in the playoffs. Golden State, I know they're not going to be able to keep their entire bench, but I think they'll be able to keep Several parts of it, okay? That is, you know, arguably the best bench in the NBA. That means that Durant's load will still be a high load, but nothing like it was with Oklahoma City, okay? It's a team that goes deeper. And I, and I think the head coach, Steve Kerr, very good talker, very good persuader, and, of course, a championship player himself, and, of course, two years ago, championship coach. This was about one thing, everybody. It's championships. You can hate the Warriors all you want. And you can, you know, and, and by the way, anybody out there who's burning Kevin Durant jerseys or bad mouthing the guy, you're an idiot. You are an absolute idiot. 
Durant did a lot for that franchise. And let me put it this way. Would you rather have, you know, Seattle slash Oklahoma City, the day that they drafted Durant, pick the number one guy, Greg Oden? What happened to Oden? <laughs> exactly. My, my people might say, who's Greg Oden? He's the guy that got picked ahead of Kevin Durant. Yeah, thanks to Portland. Seattle let you at the second pick, and we know that they picked KD. Short while later, moved to Oklahoma City. And if you're a Thunder fan, you know, I can't tell you what to do. I would suggest, though, don't burn the jerseys. I mean, it makes you look stupid. All right? Don't badmouth the guy. It was a business decision. It is a business in the end. Okay? You might be saying, well, you know, you know, we bought season tickets for so many years, you know. We were dedicated to that guy. How could you stab Oklahoma City in the back? Well, if you want to look at it from that perspective, I can't change your mind. But I'm just telling you one thing. Okay, I'm telling you one thing specifically. It was a business decision. It was about championships. And if you were in his position, would you have done the same thing? So, anyway, it's been a crazy year for free agency in the NBA already. You know, Dwight Howard going, of course, uh, to the um, Atlanta Hawks. That's, that's another one. That um, you know, some people were. Um, I'm not saying were shocked about, but now seeing him in, in, in Atlanta Hawks jersey, seeing him back in the Eastern Conference, interesting indeed. So, and of course, wait till next year. After 2017, uh, we'll see what happens because the the uh, player contracts will go even higher, and you're going to see more musical chairs happen amongst the free agents. So, Kevin Durant, member of the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, it's still hard to comprehend, but um, if you're an Oklahoma City Thunder fan, I'm sure you're saying the following things. As Metallica would say, sad but true. See you next time.